There are 37 students in the class. 35 were infected with AIDS. The beautiful teacher's name was Anna. He calmly looked down at the happy students and said, I'm going to say one important thing. I'm a single mother. I'm married to Jet, a famous writer. Before we got married, I found out I was pregnant. He was also diagnosed with AIDS. We thought about it very carefully. We decided to have the baby, but not to get married, because even if the child wasn't infected, if the father's condition is revealed, it would have a huge impact on the child's development. As my daughter, Sarah, grew up every day, I gave her all my love. A month ago, after a meeting, I realized that Sarah had disappeared. When I found him, he was dead in the school pool. The police ruled it a slip and fall drowning. It wasn't until I found this bag outside the pool fence, I realized that Sarah's death wasn't an accident. She was killed by a student in her class. Once at the mall, Sarah was crying and wanting to buy this bag. A student in her class saw her. Was it the good at? And it was one of my daughter's killers. There were two of them. I'm not going to name them. I'll call them Junior 1 and Junior 2. Junior 1 was a very good student. He inherited his mother's genes. He's a physics genius. On the surface, they look normal. But secretly, he was very cruel. He used to kill dogs and cats with a torture machine he invented. He took photos of them and posted them on his personal website to get attention. When we talked to him again, he took out his newly invented anti-theft wallet. <laughs> Then, the teenager took the anti-theft wallet. He asked me to sign an application form for a technology competition because I didn't understand the principle. I thought he was dangerous. I refused to sign it. Then I got the headmaster to sign it. As a result, the anti-theft wallet won a prize from the headmaster. Junior One was expecting. This award will make him a headline in the media. His mother would know about it. But what was reported in the newspaper and news that day? Instead, it was a story about a delinquent girl who poisoned a family of four. The boy was already angry at being overshadowed by the incident. Since he couldn't be famous for his good deeds, I'd rather kill someone to get attention because I refused to sign the application. He chose my daughter Sarah as his target. Before he could carry out his plan, he found Junior too. Because he was scared and timid, he was always skipping school to play video games for violating school rules. I punished him with half a month's labor service at school. That's why he hated me so much. We found Amy by the pool. They lied to him that this was the bag his mom bought for him. I found out later that the electric current from the bag doesn't kill people. Sarah just fainted from the shock. After Junior 1 left, Junior 2 was terrified. He threw the bag over the wall. Then he picked up Sarah and threw her into the pool. He faked Sarah's death by drowning. At this point, all the students guessed that they were Nick and Sam. Anna went on to say that they were both under the age of 14. There are child protection laws. The police will take them away for a few days to educate them and they will be released without charge. So I added HIV infected blood to the milk they just drank. Only then would they realize the value of life. <laughs> They were too scared to speak. On the stage, Miss Anna's back was wiping away the word life, as if to tell everyone, this is just the beginning. Then a new teacher came to the classroom. His name was Jack. Whenever Jack took the roll call, Jack noticed that a student named Sam was often absent from class. In order to help Sam to get rid of his illness, he encouraged the students to write notes of blessings. He and the class president took the notes every month to visit Sam every week. So the two of them went to Sam's house. Sam's mother was always berating a Mr. Anna. Sam's mother blamed Anna for Sam's low self-esteem. When the visit was over, they said goodbye and left. The next morning, Sam's mother knocked on the door. <laughs> After that, Sam would often shout and scream. Sometimes he'd run into the bathroom and frantically wash things and scrub the toilet. But he never showered. His mother had to put sleeping pews in his meals. And then she'd wipe him down when he fell asleep. And when he woke up and saw himself clean and screaming like a madman, Sam's mother couldn't figure out why. After those two men came a few times, her son was a different man. Until he saw the blessings sent were all words of mockery, rearranging the words on them. It said, murderer, go to hell. The mother's emotions were at an all-time high. He couldn't stand the thought of his son acting like a madman every day. So he wrote a suicide note. He grabbed a knife and went for it. He plunged the knife into Sam. 
Sam's chest in a hug. The knife was too shallow, not enough to kill him. By the reaction of Sam, who took the knife and slashed wildly, the mother was eventually killed, and Nick was not doing well at school. He had to endure discrimination and bullying from his classmates every day. The kind-hearted Ruth couldn't stand it. She defended Nick. She was pushed to the ground by her classmates, then pushed to the ground. Ruth and Nick kissed, thinking that would give him the same AIDS virus. After school, Nick took out his lab results. It came back negative. Ruth said, I knew a Mr. Anna was lying, so they became good friends. They often played and talked together. Ruth also slowly learned. It turns out, Nick's mother was a professor of electrical engineering. Then she married an ordinary man. She gave birth to Nick not long after that. The mother looked at her son with great expectation. She wanted her son to follow in her footsteps. As Nick grew up, he looked at his son, who couldn't be taught. He slowly lost patience. With such excellent genes, how could he give birth to such a stupid son? <laughs> Unable to bear it, his father eventually filed for divorce. Before she left, her mother left Nick a pile of books on electroshock. Knowledge books, but she didn't leave a single book on education. Looking at his mother's back, Nick was determined to study hard. He wanted his mother to know him again, and he created his own website. He put his own inventions on it, and then he put the URL on the website of his mother's school, expecting his mother to reply to him, but no one paid any attention to him. So he invented an execution machine. To kill kittens, he took pictures and uploaded them to the website. But he got a lot of attention. That made him even more determined to get people's attention. He'd have to go to extreme lengths to get attention. Knowing this, Ruth felt more sympathy for Nick. I didn't realize the good times didn't last long. Nick found Ruth's handwriting. It turned out that Sam had been driven mad. It was all planned by Anna. Since Anna knew that Jack was her daughter, a fan of her daughter's father's justice, she bribed Jack to visit her home and brought Sam notes of ridicule, including her own bullying at school and the bullying she suffered at school, which was also induced by Miss Jack. Nick asked Ruth, in a fee of rage, why did you hide it from me? And in the middle of their argument, Ruth said something about Nick having an edible complex. Nick was enraged. <laughs> He killed Ruth. He cut up his body with a knife and put it in the fridge and said hello to him every time he opened it. And what's even sicker? He was about to kill more people at home. Nick made a remote control bomb and installed it in the school auditorium to detonate the bomb when the school celebrates so that he could become famous and show his mother that the son he abandoned wasn't a fool. He recorded the video and posted on his website so that everyone who follows him to witness this historic moment on the day of the school's celebration. Nick, who was a high achiever, after delivering a passionate speech from the podium, he pressed the button to detonate the bomb, but it didn't explode. It turned out that the bomb had been taken away. Disappointed Nick walked out of the auditorium. He got a call from Anna. Anna scoffed and said, You poor, naive bastard. I removed the bomb. I visited your website. I saw the video you post. A fool who was abandoned by his mother. Give it up. Come on! Anna went on to say, the bomb I defused I didn't throw away. On the pretext of a visit, I put it in your mother's office. As you pressed the button, you killed your own mother with your own hands. 